Welcome, mates. I'm Bloodthirsty Lord, but you can call me Lordy and tell you we've got something bloody amazing. Oh my god, guys, Paragon and the Epic Games did surprise us with the latest update, which is version patch 30, which includes so many goodies, but there's one thing that was not in contained in the actual notes of the actual patch, and this is actual lore. All the Paragon lore that has been released for today that connects to all the heroes that we know about, and some might be connected into the future laws of other heroes. So that's kind of interesting, and we're gonna show you where you can find that. So all you want to do is go to your profile section, then go to your heroes, and every time you click on a hero, just click on towards that, then go in your abilities, and then you see some background information, or pretty much a lore connection to this actual hero. So that is pretty sick. And today we're going to go through each individual hero, and pretty much give you an overview of all the lore within this video. And if anything does stand out, we're going to explain that even more within this video, or even in another video in the future. But before we get into this, make sure you hit that like button for more Paragon content. And now, without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first hero we'll be looking at is Decker. We'll go through to her background information. Holds the record for the most entries in the Exotic Locals Codex, which is pretty much like the language on the actual map. You'll see some of that codex or information on the actual map, like letterings that do come up around houses, I think, and some other aspects of the game. Respected by all, feared by many, and loved by two. So this is kind of interesting. So two players or two other heroes within this game right now, or maybe in the future, do love this hero. Has a secret obsession with low-budget holovids, okay? I think you guys understand that last point. Let's move on to the next hero, and that is Feng Mao. And what he says for his one is kind of interesting as well. Once ransacked an entire village searching for his pipe. So his pipe is obviously the pipe he smokes, which is pretty sick. He went through a whole village, stealing, invading, raiding, just to find it again. So that's pretty cool. Has never worshipped the Jampaka, despite the pleas of his parents. So I'm guessing this is some god that was in their parents' vision that he had to be also worshipping but he obviously didn't and when he's on went on his own way so that's kind of interesting denies the rumor that he lost three apprentices in a single day oh that's kind of interesting lost three of them in one single day something crazy must have happened i'm guessing a massive fight but we do not know exactly let's move on to the next hero and that is gadget and obviously with all these heroes we did have a little bit of information that i did talk about with my other videos in the past about when they did sneak it in with some of the actual gameplays or live streams, so that's kind of interesting. But within this video, we're only going to talk about the lore that's connected in the actual game at this very moment. The first information we get for Gadget or Lore has a not so secret gambling addiction, enjoys the company of machines more than people, undecided by Android. So, a little joke there. Joined the Machina at 15, left it at 16. So, I'm guessing this is some type of uh, organization or group, pretty much a lot of mechanical parts or mechanical things like this character does obviously have her all around her body and she joined it did what she wanted and then obviously left and now she's got that bonus i think that's what's going on but i don't know because we need more information about every little aspect but now they're just teasing us so much but there's obviously some good information in these actual laws so that's pretty cool so the next one is gideon believes limits are for the meek on his sixth birthday witnessed the death of a star and fell in love i think this is a hidden meaning behind this i'm not exactly sure but hopefully in the future we can go more in depth in this actual point especially. Decker suspects Gideon is not his true name. So Gideon could have another name. Most likely does, but no one knows what it is at this very moment. Until another hero does encounter him and some way the lore do connect and that character does know what the actual name of Gideon is. So I'm guessing Nick Gideon will be his nickname or the name he gives himself after he's um, done something. So it's not his birth name. So that's kind of interesting. And now let's move on to Greystone. And his background information is, ran from every fight until he lost it all and stood it up. Has imprisoned Sparrow many times. We've talked about this in our video, but due to the fact that one of the actual um, people that did work on this character gave us so much information in that dev live stream. It was so amazing to hear. And that's obviously there, shining bright and amazing. That obviously he was the one that brought Sparrow back so many times and pretty much imprisoned her. Keeps a lock of black hair in his boots, but no one knows why. The only character I can think of that has black hair at this very moment is uh, Decker. Could he love Decker? Okay, he may he's maybe the first possible person that does love Decker, so that's kind of interesting. Let's move on to Grimex. Um, Grimex background information is Grim 1 EXE in a crook game of bone dice. So that's obviously an interesting game type, but we don't know. Instructions were not included. EXE is able to expurlate 73.2% of Grimex's speech. Since he's acquired EXE, all of Grimex's deaths have been forgiven. Obviously, due to the fact that he's one terrifying robot, especially when he's with little Grim with his little mastermind that he does have. Let's go on to the next hero, and that is Grux. 
and his background information is has crushed the skull of every challenger in his tribe. Oh my god, guys. So no one has ever actually destroyed him. And he's most likely a tribe leader. Still cannot defeat his grandmother in a single combat. <laughs> I see you doing the uh, Epic Games for Paragon. You're trying to make us laugh? I, it worked out pretty well. Seeks the forgiveness of his gods. So I'm guessing he's been an outcast of some type. And he's pretty much kicked out of his tribe now. Or he's done something really terrible against his gods. So that's pretty interesting there. Because this is one of my favorite heroes in the game. Because I love fighters. And he's one of the fighters I do enjoy. Let's move on to the next hero. And that's Hawitza. And his background information is Publish an article on grenades, theory, practice, and aesthetics. Charged with destruction, mayhem, and defacing public property. Install the human door in his mech. So this is kind of funny. Obviously, the last one is the, pretty much the container for your cigarettes. And obviously, as you can see, he does have a cigarette in his mouth at this current moment. Because he's a badass hero. That's pretty amazing. And obviously, with all other stuff... It's pretty much expected when you build a badass mech like that with the hot rod flames and everything and he's got explosives, grenades, and all that mayhem. He's going to destroy a bit of public property at the same time. <laughs> Let's move on to the next hero and that is Iggy and Scorch. Let's explain his information. Both were cast out as runts. Suits them just fine due to the fact that they pretty much act like pigs or pretty much dirty as hell. Filthy, that's what they're trying to say there. Scorch once ate all the Molotovs, passed out and burned down an orphanage? What? That dark humor out of nowhere. Oh my god, guys. That's pretty scary. Okay. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Iggy thinks he's a dinosaur. Scorch disagrees. Okay. So Iggy's obviously the one on, on top of the actual um, bottom part. <laughs> if I can explain it without saying his name. So that's Iggy on top and that's Scorch on the bottom. Uh, Scorch is obviously looking like a dinosaur and Iggy does not look like that at all. Problem is, how does Scorch disagree? Does he just nod his head side to side? <laughs> or does he have some type of grunt? Because I do not know. I don't want to know how he disagreed. That's one interesting thing. Now we're moving on to Kalari. Or Kaliri. Whatever you want to call her. I call her Kaliri for some reason because it's so much easier to say, but I know her name is Kalari. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting as well. Some believe she kills for pleasure. Some believe she kills because she must. And some believe neither of these is true. I don't know why this, the way they've done this full map for this little character is pretty mint. I like it. So, obviously, she does get pleasure, and she maybe wants to kill because she must, but we don't know if they're both true or they're not. So, if they, or if they are, sorry. So, that's kind of interesting. Let's move on to the next hero, and that is Chimera. And the background information for this hero is, dwelled in the jungle, alone since the age of 13, has been worshipped as a vengeful nature god, does not speak unless he must. Obviously, that's some fearful type of character lore, and the point that is, does not speak unless he must, pretty much means when he's actually going to come to kill you, that's the only time you actually hear something out of him. So that's pretty sick. Or actually see him in general. He's a god of the nature, a vengeful god, so that's pretty interesting. But the thing is, how did he get to be in the jungle at the age of 13? That's kind of cool as well. Who disowned him? How did he get there? Because there were some other rumors going on about the character, which were confirmed to you in the live stream of the dev live stream, so it was kind of interesting which I can explain in a future video, or you can watch my other video about it, when I did explain it. Now let's go into Murdoch, and he's one he's kind of interesting as well. Hasn't worked with the partner since the incident. And obviously they've quoted the incident, so there's something interesting there. The incident could be the next point as well. Never mentioned his wife, so the incident could be his wife dying in some type of way. Once suspected by Lieutenant Balaka, I think that's how you say the name, I have no clue, and skip that, never mind, for hiding stun traps in the lavatory. Okay, kind of interesting. He likes, to, he likes to use his stun traps, I understand. Let's move on to the next hero. And that will be Muriel. And with her background information, it does go more a little bit more in depth, so that's pretty nice. Long ago requested that her personality module be rewritten, but no longer knows why. So she wanted it, but she has no clue why she's even done it, or why she's still requesting it. Has had many jokes explained to her, and has dingingly noticed that they were humorous. Pretty much notifying that it was humorous due to the fact that she is some type of a robot, or most likely is a robot completely, and she's not able to experience emotion in any type of way. So when she notices other people pretty much laughing at a certain joke, she will take it as a little notepad and pretty much pr make a note of it. And so the next time it does occur, she will start laughing. Kind of funny there, I like that one, that was pretty good. Can see infrared and ultraviolet, but not the full human spectrum. So that's kind of interesting. I think infrared is the bottom and also ultraviolet is in the top. So the human spectrum is in the middle of vision and stuff, of what we can see. So that's, I think that's how it works. I can't remember exactly, sadly, but it's all cool. Let's move on to the next hero, and that will be Rampage. And now let's move on to the background information for Rampage. 
prefers a raw diet, enjoys camping in the wilderness, a gifted storyteller. Okay, pretty short and kind of sweet at the same time. So obviously camping in the wilderness is the jungle, eats raw diets because he's a beast. That's why he is. And a gifted storyteller. That one is the most interesting. Who is he telling the stories to? I don't know, man. That's kind of... I'm trying to think. But I don't have anything at this very moment. Kind of sad. But obviously when I get more ideas and more of connections between the characters, we'll also fill up this video with more lore. So that's be kind of interesting. And now let's move on to Riktor. And his background information is, Inmates learn to listen for the sound of the chains. Enjoy soft music during long torture sessions. Has a true passion for the detention industry. Oh my god, guys. This is super dark. <laughs> there was also a little bit of lore connected to this character when the live stream did occur, which is pretty much that he was a um, once an inmate, but then became a prison type of le um, lead. I can't remember what the word was. When he pretty much controls the prisoners or controls the inmates. That's why he's become... And that's why he has the number two on his head, because there's also a number one somewhere else. Or a number one prisoner that's maybe still in the prison. We have no clue about this at this actual moment, which is kind of interesting. But that is some kind of interesting information about Rigtor and what he does at this current moment. So that's cool. Let's move to the next hero, and that will be Severok. So Severok's background information is, Waits in the dark with timeless patience, does not sleep, looks forward to the signs that herald his end. So that's pretty cool. And these three points do connect back to his character design, which is pretty much like a Grim Reaper on the map of Agora within Paragon. Which is kind of interesting, but they also say that he does not sleep, obviously, because he's always awake, waiting in the darkness for, with his timeless patience, hoping to see his end come soon. Due to the fact that he's been alive for so long, he's pretty much immortal, and he doesn't want to live like that for the rest of his life. So he wants to end as quick as possible his life, as you can see with the, by the last point. Now let's move on to the next one, and that is Sparrow. Her background information is, as a child, practiced the bow until her fingers bled, then practiced some more. Has been imprisoned many times. She got imprisoned by Grace, and that's 100%. Then also loves the hunt more than the kill. So that's pretty interesting. It makes sense for someone like her. So that's nice. Let's move on to the next hero, and that is Steel. Understands the concept of mercy, just not applies it to him. First memory is the Bay Doors opening law orbit, though many follow denying being a leader. So this is kind of interesting. So he's from space. So I like that. Maybe he's some gorilla, ape, monkey type of thing that did go to space and end up turning to this beast-like creature that we see now for the map of Agora. Though many follow denies being a leader. That's kind of interesting. Who does follow this character? There might be some type of civilization in the actual space and where he comes from or another planet. We have no clue. So that's pretty sick. Now let's move on to the next hero, and that is the Fae, the latest hero. And they did not say one word about this character in the live stream, connected to all, but her name says it all, which is kind of interesting. And let's explain the three points in the background information. Believes that the purpose of all living things is to die and feed the land. More curious than the other Fae, thus she was chosen. Lost her children. Okay, children is quoted because she has some type of children. I don't know what these children are. It could be the species, which is obviously called Fae. That, that is the species of this fairy type creature that we see on the actual map of Agora. But also, the Fae is pretty much saying that she was chosen. The, giving her the name of the chosen one within the actual species of the Fae. So that makes, or species of Fae. So that should make some type of interesting idea in your head. Because this was so unclear in the first couple of days. There was no lore, nothing about the actual character until this very day. So that's pretty sick. And let's move on to the last character. And this is Twin Blast. And we did hear that he had a romantic little experience with some other hero, but let's see if it's here. Denies any information with the Ying Mei cartel, but drinks on their tab. Has talked his way out of at least five executions, and is pretty sure that he's a father. Okay, so maybe the romantic little experience that did occur did actually happen, and now he's a father. Good luck, Twin Blast, good luck. <laughs> Has also talked that his... I can't, I can't. Wait, give me a second. <laughs> has talked his way out of at least five executions that is one interesting point so he just loves to talk as much as possible to pretty much get out of any situation it reminds me of the real life kevin Hart, but obviously little things have changed on this character compared to the real life version obviously he's got robotic arms is one major factor but this character is pretty mint and he also reminds me of um guardians of the galaxy the main actor uh i can't remember his name star lord i think that's what it is don't call me on that i think it could be star lord that's what it's connected to. That's what it looks like to me. It's pretty sick. And also, he's maybe a part of a cartel or some type of gang in the actual map of Agora. So, could we see other characters in the future coming out and also being a part of the same gang or cartel? That'd be pretty sick. 
And that is all the lore we know at this current moment. And if you guys want to see this for yourself, pretty much go in the game right now in version 30 and you'll be able to do so. Pretty much clicking the actual character, go to the abilities and look at the background information. It's pretty good to give you somewhat of an understanding of where these characters come from. Pretty much give you more personality of these characters. So when you play them, you have some type of a connection between that character. So because you, you understand where they come from or what they're here for, it's pretty sick and I like that. It was long awaited, but they did well. Obviously, I want to see why Gideon is so called evil even more. Because he did give him a description here, but it isn't, isn't too strong at this very moment. So, I want to see why he's such an evil god, maybe. So, hopefully, we can get more information soon. Pretty much go more in depth in these heroes and start doing like massive um, paragraphs and pretty much essays of these character laws. Because that would be pretty sick to read. So make sure you enjoy this video, show your support, smash that blame like button. Let's try to get 50 likes on this video. And if you guys want to see more Paragon Gaming content on my channel, all you have to do is share this with your friends and hit the subscribe button to come mate today. And that is all for this video. Over time to you, but don't you worry. We'll be back very soon. Hey, Dad's boys, who's ain't seen nothing yet. And guys, I think they just added something to Grux's background information or lore, and it was one dot point saying he's bloodthirsty. So I don't understand, man. I have no clue what that connects to. <laughs> and it feels right.